Now the Bereans were of the more noble characters than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of primitive Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. My soul shall return to the word. My soul shall return to the word. My soul shall return to the word. God our Father, today the Lord's Day. Thank you for guiding us to this worship service with faith. Today does not belong to the world, but we want to become one with you. We want to meet you. We want to be accepted by you. May all of us be filled with the inspiration so that we can meet with you. Work on us, please. Make this worship service holy and be able to pleasing to you. Pleasing you. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. First the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time, if you have lived without merits of Jesus and the power of Jesus, let's repent then. Let's offer ourselves to God. Let's pray all together. 
우리 하나님의 주신 그 거룩한 보혈의 공로를 인하여 오늘 우리가 이렇게 하나님의 정말 자소, 자녀들이 되었고 하나님의 교회를 이루는 이 영광의 이 우리의 지위를 얻었는데 우리가 그러한 때는 우리 하나님의 모든 공로 우리 그리스도의 모든 우리를 위해 하신 일을 통하여 그렇게 되어온 것이지 우리 자신들의 능력이 있거나 우리 자신들의 지혜가 있거나 우리 자신들의 어느 어떤 위치가 있어서 된 것이 아닌데 하나님 아버지여 우리의, 우리의 믿음이 정말 우리의 신념에 거하여, 거하여서 우리 하나님의 주신 모든 공로를 이렇게 헛되게 한 것을 모두 용서해 주시길 원합니다 오늘 시간부터는 우리 겸손이 오직 하나님의 뜻에 의하여 살고 하나님의 말씀에 의하여 살고 하나님이 인도하시는 인류의 인도의 이끌음을 받아 살기 원합니다 역사에 주시옵시고 우리 부족한 거 용서해 주시옵소서 우리의 고집 있던 거 용서해 주시고 우리의 생각 속에 우리 자신이 너무 많았던 거 용서해 주시고 우리 교회는 주님의 몸된 우리들이 주를 위하여 섬기고 주를 위하여 몸을 구성하거니와 하나님 앞에서 우리의 생각들을 더 내세워 어떤 걸 용서해 주시옵시고 온전히 하나님의 뜻과 우리 하나님의 능력과 우리 하나님의 지혜와 우리 하나님의 이끄시는 모든 이끄심으로 살수 있도록 도와주시고 우리 하나님 베푸시고 우리 하나님이 이미 이루셨던 모든 고난을 의지하여 살수 있도록 되기 원합니다 역사해 주시고 그래야 우리 마음이 순수해지고 그래야 우리 마음이 온전히 하나님 앞에 받쳐지기를 원하오니 역사해 주시옵소서 역사해 주시고 우리 모든 부족한 것을 채워 주시옵소서 예수 이름으로 회개하며 기도드리옵나이다 Holy God, our Father, today the Lord's Day, which is the holy day, being separate from the world, and you called us, and thank you for calling us as the worshipers to this service. We have gained the victory during the last week in your grace. And also, also for today, we 
give it the service as a true worshippers in spirit and in truth. So please make us be able to experience your wor work and a power through this time. God, please guide us so that we can rely on the merits of Jesus' blood and merits. And as Jesus set us free by His truth, may all of us be free by the truth. And also please make us be guided by the Holy Spirit so that we can please God our Father in our, in our faith lives. And God our Father, thank you for having guided the Song Rock Church. And please give all of us the foundation of faith so that we can be used as the instrument of the righteousness. And God our Father, make all of us be one with being centered being centered on the overseer and please also work on the overseer give him a new health and a power so that he can fulfill all of your works and God our Father God our Father make all of us pay attention to the church's financial status so that all parts of the church can overcome the hardships and God our Father we have received the grace and the blessings through the Song Rock Church and God our Father, please make all of our descendants be blessed through the Song Rock Church. May all of us be blessed more and more. And God our Father, we are praying for today's messenger, the overseer, again. Please give him a new health so that he can preach the words of God with the wisdom and the knowledge and inspiration of the word. And God our Father, make all of us be able to listen to the message, not as, not as the words of the man, but the words of the God. Please, please God, guide us, guide us into the, all the truth and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your road and your step, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Greet each other. God our Father, on this Holy Lord's Day, worshiping you, uh, we have gathered our offerings this time. Please remember each of us. Please remember those who gave their tithe this time and make them be guided. And also, through their descendants, make your promise be fulfilled in their lives. And God our Father, please remember and bless those who gave their uh, monthly offering for the church. Please help them. Please make their spirit get along well. And please help their family members. And also there are those who give their thanksgiving this time. since they have offered the thanksgiving to the church please make them be blessed so that their souls get along well in their spiritual lives and also make them experience miraculous work of you and please remember each of the saints here who has given this offerings Make them be able to gain the victory in their spiritual lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May the blessings and the grace be with you all. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Today's God's word is from Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 to 25. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 to 25. Let's do a response reading. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is His body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from the guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with the pure water. Let us hold unservingly to the hope we process, profess, for, we, for he who promises faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward the love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. Amen. This time, let's pray for us to listen to the voice of the Lord and also for the messenger of a seer and for all of us to have the inspiration. Let's pray all together. God our Father, today, thank you for calling us to this worship service. Do not make them pass through this time without any change. But please make them be able to receive the grace for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep the holy day. Today's outline. Let's pray together. God is the Father. For His Son, He created the world and all things and will to inherit them to His Son. The Son humbly obeyed and came to the earth to taste the death in order that He might receive the everything given Him. Finally, for their souls, He purchased by His blood. He gave the Holy Spirit to seal and keep them. The Holy Spirit established the church and called it the body of Jesus Christ so that the souls are not scattered. The holy day is a stringent commandment like that of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, but the Sabbath and the Lord's day are the days of the Lord. Just as the one who broke the Sabbath was put to death, the Lord's day is likewise a holy day. Whoever awaits the Lord's day is surely holy. Let us remember that the Lord's day is a holy day on which Jesus resurrected and the Holy Spirit descended. The church is the Lord's body. The holy day is the day of serving the Lord's body in a holy manner. The holy day and the Lord's day are one. Forsaking the assembly of ourselves means to forsake the Lord Jesus. Hence, whoever does so is a betrayer of the Lord Jesus. Keeping the 
the Lord says to act of faith and earnestly awaiting the return of Jesus. It is His commandment. Let us keep the holy day. Let us demonstrate the faith that overcomes the world. The holy day must be the day of joy as though we are meeting the Lord Jesus at His coming. Amen. Let's sing a hymn song first. 178. Ah, <laughs> Oh, 
성령이오셨네 내 주위에 보내시 성령이오셨네 이 기쁜 소식을 온 세상 전하세 성령이 오셨네 우리가 성령으로 말씀드려야 돼 We have to listen to the word by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 says, May God give them the inspiration and the wisdom so that they may know the hope and the power given from God. Let's say, Lord, to my soul, give me the inspiration of revelation. Give me the inspiration. You have to pray so, so that you can receive the Lord's message with inspiration. God is Father. Who proclaimed that? The Lord Jesus said, God is the Father. We didn't know Him before Jesus. Only after Jesus revealed Himself can we know that the God is the Father. So it is the grace that we know that God is the Father because we have listened to the message that God is the Father from Jesus. That's why we call God our Father when we pray. Before the time of Jesus, in the time of the law, no one could call the God the Father because they didn't know who God was. So when we call our God the Father, it means that Jesus is the Son. There's a Son of God. And Jesus, the Son of God, is equal with the Father. Father and the Son, as one God, they are one. They are equal. But, but Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. But my Father is greater than me. So the Abu, uh, the prefix of the Father, Ava, Father, means the greater, greatest one. So God is, God the Father is greater than any other thing. That's what Jesus means. So God the Father is greater than Jesus, the Son of God, which means Jesus is a humbled person. So Jesus said, claiming to be humble and gentle, and Jesus said, come to me and learn from me because I'm gentle and humble. Who is the Son of God then? The Son of God is the equal with the Father, but He didn't consider Himself to be equal with His Father, but lowering Himself to be the serpent, servant. And humbling himself even to the point of death on the cross. That's what the Philippi uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 says. So the Son of God and, a, and God is, this, is equal. The, the book of John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Which means the Word, the Son of God, is equal with the Father. God and he is the son of God and Jesus the son of God considered the father as a greater one God is a greater than all the things including the universe and even the heaven he is much greater than all the created beings. When we say God, uh, you should not imagine a old person as God. 
You shouldn't imagine it that way. God himself is greater than all the things, even than the Jesus, the Son of God. So when we pray, Lord commanded us, pray in this way. God our Father, since He's the greatest one, so when we pray, the absolute, the greatest God before Him, we kneel down before Him. And we mankind are like the dust and the ground. We are like the powder of the dust. So think about the gap between God and us. Although Jesus, Jesus was equal with the Father, but He lowered Himself and humbled Himself. What does it mean to humble? Gentle. Why? To obey His Father. Obedience means when the Father commands something with understanding, He obeys the command of the Father. That's what the obedience means. And what about the submission? Even if the Son does not understand the will of the Father, for example, when Jesus was about to die on the cross, He said, Elo, Elo, Labak, Sabakdani. Why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried out to his father. Jesus couldn't understand the, the will of the father when he was about to die on the cross. That's why Jesus said, why have you forsaken me? But Jesus submit to the father. Even at the moment. Sometimes we know we understand the will of the Father, but sometimes we would reject and um, res even resist to the God's will. But we have to submit ourselves to God because it is God's command. So the son, before his father, humbled himself, being gentle. He has never revealed resist resistance against the Father because He was humble and gentle. Jesus said, I am humble and gentle. Please take my yoke. Come to me and take my yoke and learn from me. So it is very important to understand um, the Son and the Father. But under the law, there is no relationship revealed. Uh, there are many, but there are many par there are many parables about God, but the law has never taught about the relationship of the God and the Father, a God and the Son. And Mary was uh, conceived the Son. Jesus, uh, the, the angel of the Lord said, "You will have the Son." And when Jesus was uh, when Jesus came out of the water when he was baptized, the God the Father said, This is my beloved son. And at the same time, the Son of God proclaimed that God is the greatest one. And before him, Jesus said, I am humble, I am gentle, obeying my Father. When you look around, and uh, when you see the people who are loyal to their parents, but they uh, usually obey the parents' commandments, even if they don't understand them. So we have to know the relationship between the God and the Son. And knowing the relationship is our gospel, is our faith. God sent His Son not to do the will of the Son, but to do the will of Himself. And the Son of God also came to the world only to do, to do the will of the Father. Only to the will of the Father. 
but no one has seen the Father. But that does not mean that uh, you can imagine in your own way. Only obeying to the Father is our faith. We, in Jesus Christ, we have to be absolutely obedient to God the Father. But sometimes, when we are able, when we can understand the commandments, yes, we can do that. But even when we are under the persecution and under any kind of pressures, but even at the very moment, we have to submit ourselves to God the Father. This is the faith. So gospel is the promise between the God and the Son. The gospel explains about the fulfillment of the promise between the God and the Son. You knew what the further good and evil is, which is fear for commandments. The further good and evil enables the people to know the good and evil. Once you know the good and evil, uh, you can feel the guilty conscience. Because you can judge good and evil. That's why you feel guilty. But in the time of the Nephilim, before the uh, time of the fruit, no one couldn't uh, sense it. But after the commandment of the fruit of good and evil, and uh, the fruit of good and evil is the same with the law. So when you're commanded not to do not to eat the fruit, but once you eat of it, you are guilty. Then you can be the sinners. Then you are to die eternally. And this is a sin. But people today they consider the coming of the sin by eating the fruit of good and evil. Uh, the most people consider it a great sin. But the uh, people usually commit even more serious sins in their daily lives. If, it, if, if the committing the sin by the fir, uh, eating the fruit of good and evil is fearful, and you, the sins that you commit, that you have committed, are also fearful. When you receive the grace for the first time, what you experience as a Christian is the keeping the holiday, consecrating the holiday. That's why you are encouraged to come again to the church once you become the Christians. That's why the uh, all of the, uh, the, even the beginners in the church, even though even if they don't know the truth, even though they, even though they don't know the Bible, but they are likely to come to the church to keep the holiday. That is the first experience as a Christian. Even in the Revelation, it says, the first fruit of Christ, from that fruit, those who con consecrate themselves with the first fruits are able to sing a new song in front of the Christ. Just as the, the 144,000 of the Israelites who are chosen are able to sing a new song because they have consecrated the first fruit of the Christ because they have kept the first fruits. Of course, you can fluctuate in your uh, spiritual lives. In, uh, in, according to your circumstances, you can change, but, but it, keeping the holy day, the Lord's day, is what you have to do always. So the first fruit in Christ, the keeping the holy day should be maintained. But today, Many people 
does not keep their first fruits of the keeping the holy day. They just desecrate the first fruits, the keeping the holy days. The holy day is the day of the rest of God after He had finished the creations. After He had finished the creations, He rests from His work. So all of the creation of God was the God's work. After He had finished, He rested. And God called it the Sabbath. Even God Himself rested on the very day. So that's why the no one was allowed to work. So when the people of Israel received the law under the Mount of Sinai, they have uh, they they have re they received the commandment of the keeping the Sabbath. It was the commandment, keeping and commemorating the Sabbath. What should they remember? Commemorate the fact that the God rested on the day. And this is all the prophecy for the judge, uh, Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he became the flesh, revealing himself the Son of God. And during the three years of his public life, he did many great works. He helped the poor people. He gave he gave the many benefits to the people, but it was just the fulfillment of the God the Father, God the Father's will. Only according in accordance with the Father's will, He healed the sick people, He freed the people, He did all of His work, and after finishing all the work, He said, "Elo elo amasabakdani, my God, my God." Why have you forsaken me? Please take my spirit. And Jesus and died. And before he died, he, he said, It is finished. And he died. He gave up himself. After he had finished all his work, all the Father's work, just as the God, God, finished, God had finished the, his work of the creation he rested in the same way the son of god coming to the world and after have finishing finished this work saying it is finished he rested on the day so in the bible on the sabbath the people of Israel Israel didn't hang the people on the cross because the whole uh, the Sabbath was the holy day that's why the the people at the time and the took the Jesus body and the buried his body in the tomb that was the day of the uh, that Saturday so God gave the commandment of the Sabbath so that they can experience the Sabbath. But on the next day, on the eighth day, is the day on which Jesus was resurrected. Jesus' body was fully dead, but his body was raised to life as a spiritual body even he can go through the wall so after his resurrection he ascended to heaven and then sent the Holy Spirit to those who believe so that so that, uh, that the people the believers can be can become the church 
the church is the body of the Jesus resurrections, not the death body, but the body of the resurrection. That's what the church is. So we are, you and I are the parts of the body of Christ. Even though Jesus uh, had the damage on his body, but all of us be have become the one body of Christ. And, it, and this is, this is about the, what the Holy Day is about. So what do, we, what do we see on this Holy Day? We do not commemorate the death one. Today is not the Sabbath. But we commemorate the resurrected one on the very day on which the Holy Spirit inspires us when the Holy Spirit works on us. This is the Holy Day. So on this Holy Day, those who look forward to the return of Jesus, they gathered. Jesus said, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. That's what the Mark chapter 2 verse 27 says. In the time of the Old Testament, there was no Jesus. Even during the time of the law, as God had finished, after he had finished his work of creation, he rested. And Jesus said, I am the Lord. I'm the one who prophesied. I'm the Lord who created the Sabbath. I'm the Lord who consecrated the Sabbath. I'm the Lord who commanded you the Sabbath. But that does not mean that you have to sacrifice yourself for the sake of the Sabbath. To keep the Sabbath, to, to keep the Lord's Day, you might think that you have become the slave for the, for the Holy Day. You might misunderstand that you are sacri sacrificing yourself for the Lord's Day. But that's your misunderstanding. That's why you have, have, haven't received the grace. The day of the resurrection was the Pentecost. On the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came on the people. The first John says, the fact that you receive the Holy Spirit means Jesus is in you. Jesus indwells in you. So it is the Lord's day when you receive the Holy Spirit. On the day of the Pentecost, the people receive the Holy Spirit and they speak in tongue, spoke in tongue, as the Holy Spirit enabled them to do. But some people persecuted, uh, persecuted us just because we have speaking tongue. This is the unique experience of the Holy Spirit as a sign and the spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit. How much, uh, how much are you ignoring the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit? Some people, even after they have, uh, even after they speak in the uh, speaking a tongue, but they stop their speaking the tongues. Once you st uh, stop your speaking the tongue, your spirit would be in desperate and frustrated. But the speaking tongue is what the Holy Spirit enables you to. Some ask me how I have received the inspiration of the revelation so far. Yes, it is simple. 
I have welcomed what the Holy Spirit has given us, has given me. No matter what kind of thing it is, just as the all parts of your body are precious for yourself, only with your mouth, you can you can never eat. Your teeth is your teeth are needed. In the same way, no matter what kind of things the Holy Spirit is giving you, you have to receive them, all of them. And it is the Holy Lord say, when the Holy Spirit gives the spiritual gift, so you are you you should be able to use the Holy Lord's day for yourself. The Bible said. The Sabbath was was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The holy day was made for man, for us. So on the on the holy day, we have to receive the grace because we have listened to the gospel that Jesus was resurrected. This is the our first rest, uh, first experience as a Christian. So all of you have experienced the res resurrection of the Jesus. And the book of Hebrews said, you have joined in the Holy Spirit. Keeping the Lord's day means joining in the Holy Spirit because the, it is the Holy Spirit who gathered all the people. But once you have forsaken the, uh, the Holy Spirit, you can never be renewed. Uh, if you if you break the, the holy day one times or two times, as time goes by, your hearts will be hardened. You will not be you will not feel the guilty conscious about it. But Jesus will say, "Get behind me from Satan! You do not think about the work of the Lord." You just think about your circumstances. You, you just consider the thoughts. That's what the Satan, that's what the Satan works. Our faith is about just following the Lord's will. Our holy day is for us to gain life. What was the first slogan of the Songwak Church? The church that is successful in the service. When the single man sanctuary was built for the first time, I carved the phrase, the church with successful worship service. So successful worship service, succeeding the worship service is the first fruit in Christ. And we should maintain that first fruit, being successful in the worship service. Just as the book of Revelation chapter 14 says, those who maintain the first fruit in Christ, who are holy in their faith, we should be like them. Of course, your the amount of the faith, uh, the the amount of the ties can be changed. But no matter what kind of condition it is, keeping the holy day should not be disturbed, because the keeping the holy day means. The participating in the Holy Spirit. So, after you're coming to, to the church, you should learn from the Holy Spirit, you should be guided by the Holy Spirit, and you should experience the working of the Holy Spirit. Do not be just religious people, but be the people of the Holy Spirit and understand that this holy day was made for you. Do not reject this holy day, but participate in this holy day and receive grace. 
receive the Holy Spirit and be loved by God and also receive the message of God and calling His name so that so that you can gain the benefit from the holiday. Then you will not you will be healed. You will not be sick. So keeping the holiday means awaiting for the Lord, of awaiting for the bridegroom. That's why you don't leave in the day of the past. But you have to prepare yourselves to participate in the wedding of the ceremony with the Christ. This is what your faith is. If you are not sure about uh, the keeping the holiday, it is, a, it is actually meaningless. So we have the five duty as a Songrong people. The first, keep the holiday. This is the first duty of the Songrong persons. I have highlighted that. Even I claim, even I commanded the Songrong people to cry it out or keep the holiday 100 times. So keeping the holy, holy day should be the first priority in your spiritual life. Once you become the member of a Songran people, you are the necessary part of the church. You are the part of the body of the Christ. What if the, there's some, there are not parts of the church? So the keeping the holiday means edifying the body of the Christ. So when you come to the church, the Bible says, do not be empty-handed. Prepare your offerings before, then come to the church. Why didn't the Why did Bible say so? The Matthew chapter uh, The Matthew said, "Where there, where your, where your, where your offering is, your heart is." So Second Corinthians says, "You have to prepare your offerings, and you have to prepare your service before, and that's." And they are those the God a six and those who, who those who sow a much will will reap the much on the day of the first on the day of the first day of, of the week you have to give your service you have to prepare your service your offerings the preparing your offering earlier means you are preparing yourself to be loved to receive the grace to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and the fullness of the Holy Spirit that's why you prepare your service your offerings before but if you if you do not to prepare the uh, the offerings you're just like the, the the finding some money from your pockets because you didn't prepare. Where there's a wealth, where there, where there's a, the money and the offerings, your heart is also. In the past, in Korea, before the time of the 1972, all of the churches have their own um, the church register. When one one person moved to move from the Methodist church to the Presbyterian church, they should carry their uh, the register register. 
So from Baptist Church to the Presbyterian or Presbyterian to Methodist, all of the church members should, ha should uh, to carry their registered membership. But after the time of the 1972, the many planted churches uh, were made. The many people are trying their best to steal the other church members to their church. That's why they didn't carry uh, the, the, their registers. So even, even at the time, the one person, even one person had the five membership of the five churches. Why have I maintained uh, the 180,000 of the memberships? Because uh, some members uh, came back to the church after 20 years or the six months or several years. They are saying like, uh, I came to the I came to the church. After 20 years, since I came to the church, but that kind of the people uh, consider the Song Rock Church as their mother church. So they were afraid that uh, whether their names were removed from the registered. So, so for that kind of the people, I, uh, I have kept the membership. Of all the people, that kind of the people wept a lot after they came back to the church. So, the Jesus word came up my mind. Whenever you bind something on earth, then in in the heavens also it is it will be bound. So, even just for one person who came to the church for the f just one day, I consider that person our members. But from now on, we won't do that. And in one other church, in another church, when one person um, didn't do not attend, do not attend the church uh, for more than the six months, then that person's membership will be removed. Suppose that uh, we just keep the the people who do not attend to the church, but we, if we keep the, their membership in the register, the church register, then we will not deal with it. See, Jesus died on the cross to remove the wall between the God and the people. In the past. There's a tabernacle. Inside of the tabernacle, there's a two rooms. In a holy place, the first room was a holy place where the, the priests uh, regularly did their ministry. But in the most holy place, the second room, the only the high priest can enter once a year. And behind the two rooms, the sanctuary was divided into two, holy place and the most holy place. So we are like the we are the priest who can enter the holy place. By the Holy Spirit, inside of the holy place, we can serve God. We can do our ministry. But in the most holy place, only the Lord, the high priest, entered. Before he entered, the curtain wa curtain divided the, the place into the two. When Jesus died on the cross, the curtain inside of the temple was torn apart. So the two spaces become one, which means there's no wall that... Uh, that block the way to the God, which represent the law. The, 
The duty of the law is to condemn the sinners. Law produces sin. But once the curtain was divided and uh, was torn apart, the law was gone. The law can block the way for God. By the scenes, we are blocked from God. But as Jesus shed his blood, the curtain was torn apart, and there's no blocking. Before God, so with the with uh, with the merits of Jesus, the merits of Jesus means the removing me, removing the curtain, removing the curtain of the Lord uh, curtain between the God and us. There's no guilty conscience. There's no law. Once the curtain was torn apart. Only the love of the Father, only the humbleness toward God. So that's the new way. So as Jesus shed his blood, by the blood of Jesus, Jesus opened a new way, and toward that way, we can proceed to God. So he says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward the love and good deeds. Let us not keep up the meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. In the hope of the return of Jesus, why do we look forward to it? Those who do not keep the keep the Lord Lord's day, they they don't have the hope. They are to go to hell. So in the day of the resurrection means we will be resurrected into a spiritual body. We can see ourselves with a new body just as Jesus was resurrected into a new body. So let us consider how we may spur one another one toward the love and good deeds. Do not give up the meeting together. So the church means gathering. If you surely look forward to the Lord's Day, the day of the resurrection, you should keep the holy day. Two women were grind, grounding, grinding, but one will be rest, one be taken, but one will remain. The two people will sleep, but the one will will be taken by the Lord, but what will re, the other will be remained. You should be you should deserve to be taken by the Lord. You should be connected with the vine, and you should take you should take the uh, the ingredients from the roots of the vine, since we are the branches. And the Jesus also said in the book of John, uh, book of John, chapter sixteen. Once the branches are disconnected, they withers. Once they withered, and the people will take them and throw them into the fire. So you are the branches of the church. If you are not taking the ingredients from the roots and you withered, and you will be disconnected and you will be thrown into the lake of the fire. So the keeping the Lord's Day is very important. Do not I, I don't mean to I don't mean that you should be the slave of the slave of the holiday. 
If you don't get if you don't get the benefit from the Lord's day, you will perish. Which means you should receive the Holy Spirit. You should be you should be loved by God. You should receive the grace and the words of God. You should gain life. This is the day of the life. Of course, rest of the weekdays you can uh, gain physical life, but the holy days. Or during the weekdays, you can uh, make money. But the whole the Lord's day is the when the God gives you the life, gives you the grace and life. That's why you have to keep the holiday. Let's read Hebrews chapter ten, from twenty-five to twenty-nine. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 to 29. Let's read together. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us un encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day of approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left. But only a fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without the mercy. Let's stop it. So, if you deliberately, deliberately keep on sinning after receiving you have received the knowledge of the truth, but that there is no blood, there is no merits of the cross, there is no sacrifice for the deliberate sins, but only the judgment, nothing but the judgment, nothing but the lack of the fire. Let's crunch the feast. Let's say, Oh my soul, keep the holy day. Oh my soul, keep the holy day. Oh my soul, keep the holy day. In the book of Nehemiah and the Ezra, the prophets and the scholars examine the, this reason why why the people of Israel have been uh, cursed by God. They look back on the what the people of Israel had done. The Lord said, "My people have forsak uh, forsaken the holy day." That's what the, the two books showed us. That's why they were, they were encouraged to repent. And they, don't, they were decided to disconnect anyone who would desecrate the holiday. Dear my people, no matter what kind of condition you are in, no matter what kind of circumstances you have, Keep the holiday. In the 1980s, there are two members in our church who moved from the Jeju Island and through the flight, uh, and through the uh, through the flight, they came, uh, they came to the church every Lord's Day. You have to keep the Lord's Day than anyone else. If you don't keep the Lord's Day, you are not a Songnak people. Please stand up. Please stand up. Participate in the Holy Day. Participate in the Holy Spirit. You have to be guided by the Holy Spirit for yourselves and for your families not to wither, not to wither, not to be dried, but to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray all together. To leave, to survive, pray. Pray, pray to survive, pray to survive. Pray, 
Repent. Repent if you have, a, have a forsaken the holy day. Repent. Repent. To survive. Repent. To survive. Repent. To survive. Repent. God our Father, make all the song rock people consecrate and keep the holy day. Keeping the holy day is the truth, which is a greater and more fearful commandment, commandment than the fruit of good and evil. If anyone Anyone who ignore the truth, there's no sacrifice, there's no forgiveness for them. Please make none of them forsake the holy day. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say, All my soul keep the Lord's day. All my soul keep the holy day. All my soul keep the holy day. No matter what kind of circumstances you have, you have to keep the holiday before God. That's the way you gain eternal life. Say Amen if you do that. Amen. 밝히고 너는 깨 여기서 주를 반겨 맞아라 주 안에서 우리 몸과 마음이 깨끗하게 되어서 주 예수님 다시 오실 때에 모두 기쁨으로 맞아라 주 오늘에 다시 오신다면 부끄러움 없을까 잘하였다 주님 칭찬하며 우리 맞아 주실까 주 안에서 우리 몸과 마음이 깨끗하게 되어서 주 예수님 다시 오실 때에 모두 기쁨으로 맞아라 주 예수님 맡겨주신 일에 모두 충성하했나 내 맘속에 확신 넘칠 때에 영원한 식 없겠네 주 안에서 우리 몸과 마음이 깨끗하게 되어서 예수님 다시 오실 때에 모두 기쁨으로 맞아라 주 예수님 언제 오시는지 한밤이나 나지마 늦게 여서 주님 맞는 손도 주의 영광 보겠네 주 안에서 우리 몸과 마음이 깨끗하게 되어서 주 예수님 다시 오실 때에 모두 기쁨으로 맞아라 May the grace of the Jesus Christ and the greatest love of God our Father and inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit may be on the Songrock people and all the barriers throughout the world forever and ever. Amen. Berian's song, the one verse. 
I go clips I clip. Louder, louder. Let's give a big hand to ourselves since we have consecrated the holiday. Yeah. Let's shake hands each other. Let's keep the holiday. Let's keep the holiday. Thank you. Today, please join us in the evening worship service to celebrate the appointment.